In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place. I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on arts, culture, anything in between. And today I'm joined by Toby Sells, news editor for the Memphis Flyer and host of the weekly Radio Flyer radio show on WYXR. So stay with us for an interview with Toby Sells. The Sidebar is sponsored by FedEx Employees Credit Association, offering savings, checking, and lending to all FedEx employees, retirees, and their family members at FECCA.com. Toby, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, you are also, and I probably should have done this as your uh, part of your lead intro. You are a regular contributor to Behind the Headlines, the show I've done. You've been how many times do you think you've been on Behind the Headlines uh, it, as a guest? Has it been uh, north of fifteen at this point? It might be. Might be You're somewhere around in there. there. You're yeah. way up there. We always try to figure out uh, what is the the num- who's been on the show the most of the non journalist guests. And um, um, I, I think for a while, it might be, it might be Strickland now. For a while, yeah. it was Dorsey Hobson. But I, in terms of the journalists, you're way up there, uh, which I appreciate. Well, no, I appreciate it, too. I mean, mm-hmm. I, honestly, uh, if we're just talking here, I had never done television before. Uh, I did uh, behind the headlines. I'd done maybe something, but nothing ever as a journalist, I don't think. Uh, and I remember the day that I was on the show, the first time you asked me to be there uh, was the, uh, when Strickland got elected. Uh, that was, oh, wow. that was the Wednesday, I guess, right after election, uh, the election night. And we had covered it. I'd covered elections before, but we had never covered it flyer style, which means by the seat of our pants and always drinking and having a good time while we're doing everything. <laughs> I ended up over at the Strickland camp and with no political acumen at all. I'm the worst political prognosticator out there. And, uh, and here comes AC Wharton on the television screen. Uh, and he's conceding. And I was surprised. I was like, wow, I'm at the winning camp and people started having a great time and getting super chatty and drinking. Uh, and then after that, I met um, my other flyer folk out and, and we had some more drinks. Then I finally went to bed and I woke up. And when it's time to do behind the headlines, I am not feeling great. I'm not looking great uh, and everything in between. And I'm looking at all the other guys I know that were actually <laughs> covering the election straight and doing it great. They look sharp. They look with it. There were some TV guys there. And I was like, I am out of my league on this program. I will never be asked. I'll never be asked back. Uh, but this is going to be a great experience. And so I did it. But thank you guys for, and, and for having me back. Oh, no, it's always awesome. Um, the, uh, I, I, now I'm feeling like I remember that, that you, you were in a bit of a cold sweat. <laughs> there was a little, there was a little, little pallor, little, yeah. little, little dampness around the, uh, the temples, the brow. Yeah. You know. And that was that was for many many reasons. I mean, I, you know, you walk into that studio and there are the big cameras. I've never really seen that kind of stuff before. And you know, you're you're walking in there with all of these like you know triple A, uh, you know, uh, uh, big name reporters in Memphis. And I'm sitting there like I was the guy who was like hanging out at Slider Inn until eleven, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And I'm thinking, Tobes, you you need to uh, you need to relax, buddy. But uh, but y'all did. You had me back uh, over many many times. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, and it, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun to be on the show for sure. And it's a lot of fun to be on Sidebar. I love what uh, what you're doing with the show. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's very uh, you know with the side the whole idea of the Sidebar was our uh, mutual friend Carrie Hayes, uh, but now yeah. uh, what chief of staff to uh, uh, Mayor Berkey in um, Chattanooga, but was a PR and a political guy. Worked for Wharton, all that. Still is is back and forth to Memphis. And um, he one time, oh, it was when we were doing the, I think we were doing the debate. And he, back when he had his PR business, he, um, he helped us with the debate or I can't remember how, oh, he was working for Urban Land Institute. Anyway, and he was, he got to be behind the scenes a bunch. And it's just kind of just a bit of a, you know, sort of a circus of particularly around the debate. And Natalie, the producer of the sidebar, who won't speak today, but is is with <laughs> us and is the producer of behind the headlines and produced that 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 Strickland Wharton Mike Williams Harold Collins debate, um, was yelling at me rightly about doing something wrong and not being responsible and and it was really like I think it was day of and I and when did Carrie Carrie was back there and he's got he was like this is like some rowdy sitcom or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> and after that, he after he got through that debate, he was like, you know, we really should figure out a way to do behind the headlines in a bar. You know, do it yes. with like drinking with kind of a live feel. And yes. so we we went and we talked to people. And this is years ago. This is when I was still the Daily Memphian hadn't launched. And we wanted, uh, we thought we got some friends to come up with some marketing and came up with the name the sidebar. And we did a promo perfect of um in in a bar. I think we did it in Laughlin. And but we then the Daily Memphian kind of fired up and I couldn't focus on doing yet another TV show. I actually had to focus on the Daily Memphian. So this well, is could, kind can, of sort of the sidebar. Kind yeah. Of. And, uh, uh, and it's great. You know, I wish we were in a bar, um, but uh, maybe maybe 2021, the sidebar will yes. move to a bar, uh, to one of the many, many bars out there. Um, it was, I mean, we're doing this by Zoom, even though it's not, we're not recording the video, but it, which helps a lot. But last week I did, um, it did the interview in person with Jennifer Biggs sitting outside distance and having a glass of wine. And it was awesome to, I know it wasn't last week, it was two weeks ago. But to do to be actually interviewed, not just the booze, but to interview somebody in person yes. is so much better than this whole Zoom thing. I mean, it yeah. just oh. and and you don't really know how much. And it, it was interesting, you know, from when I had begun uh, my journalism career many years ago, uh, you did everything in person, you know, and phone calls were were a thing, of course, you know. But uh, uh, if you wanted information, you went down to city hall, you went down to the police department, uh, and that's where you got all your information and all that stuff has moved online now and it's made being a reporter a lot easier. Uh, but there is absolutely nothing like a face-to-face -face interview to really, really capture the moment, capture the story and probably get stuff that you would have missed otherwise. So, uh, yeah. you know, while so much has moved online in, in journalism, uh, the face-to-face -face interview I found is, is one of those that's lacking. And uh, I will be glad when I forget yeah. how zoom works, you know, one yeah. of these days. Absolutely. And we, sh we should say, again, uh, I'm here talking with Toby Sells, uh, news editor for the Memphis Flyer and also host of the weekly radio flyer on WYXR. So if you're listening to this as a podcast on the Daily Memphian, um, this show airs every Thursday at 1130. Um, what, the radio flyer is on Friday at what time? I should have written that down. Noon, uh, Noon. Which, is, which is a perfect time for the show and what we do. Uh, you know, a lot of people turn to the flyer, uh, many, many people turn to the flyer to kind of help them get their weekend together, right? Kind of help them plan uh, what they're going to get into if they haven't already checked it out. It's a place where you can uh, go in a print uh, publication and look at our calendar of events and, and kind of go through and say, yeah, I want to do X, Y, and Z. So the Friday noon slot is kind of genius. It's right there at lunch. Uh, and I joke almost every week that, uh, you know, if bosses out there believe that uh, uh, their employees aren't already celebrating the weekend at noon on Friday that uh, they're, they're kind of kidding themselves, especially these days at working from home. So um, the, the new slot is great because it's kind of a fun, uh, you know, the show, I try to keep it fun and kind of airy. We do a little bit of news on there, but really uh, more, we try to do some calendar listings and some fun stuff and uh, get folks just kind of ready for the weekend. Yeah. Um, but you're, are you talking to, I think you had Jackson Baker mm -hmm. on, right? I mean, so you're bringing in kind of guests and reporters from, from the staff. That's right. Yeah. And you know, what I always wanted the show to be, uh, and I had planned a podcast, um, um, a little while ago, but it didn't get off the ground. And then when I was approached by YXR to, to do a show, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to really, uh, formulate this thing uh, and get it moving the way that I always saw the podcast going. You know, it's another way to kind of get the the flyer staff. You know, our our cast of characters that we have on the flyer. It's another way to get their their real voices out to the community, out in front of people, and so you can actually hear the voice of Jackson Baker. You might have you know read his uh, his political columns for years and years, but actually hear him speak about this stuff uh, is interesting. Our uh, uh, I've also had on our editor Bruce Van Weingarten. Uh, who used to do, uh, what show was that? It was uh, uh, Bad Dog and Rick, because that was a show. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Mad Dog and, yes. Yes, you know the one I'm talking about. And, right. and, he, and he still did the show for a, a long time. And he was on there, I think it was like every Wednesday, they would get the paper out and kind of go through it. But people got to know his voice. And we were sitting in an airport one time. We were sitting in Memphis. We were flying out to a conference. And we were all just sitting there waiting for the, the, air, the, the airplane to get there. And Bruce was saying something, this guy across, uh, you know, across the way over there gets up and he walks over and he says, man, are you, are you Bruce Van Weingarten? You know? And Bruce just looks up and he's like, uh, yeah, you know, cause his name is never in the paper. And he's like, man, I hear you on the radio all the time, dude. I just think it's awesome. Love what you're doing, you know? And it's one of those things. It's like the power of somebody's voice, you know, 
Uh, I was hanging out with Justin Willingham one time uh, a long time ago. Oh, from WKNL, one of the yeah. most recognizable voices in Memphis at this point. I mean, among uh, it's certainly among public radio, but but just one of the most recognizable voices. Yeah, and uh, you've probably heard him uh, screw up the news and, and the date and time uh, more times <laughs> than anything. Love you, Justin. I'm just kidding, buddy. Uh, but we we were hanging out in some group, and he starts talking, and people. Uh, people, they, their, they, their eyes light up, you know, and they start looking around and he's like, this happens quite a bit, you know, like you wouldn't know me walking down the street. But as soon as I start, you know, ordering uh, some food or something like people are like, wait a second, I know who you are. And uh, it's just a really interesting thing. So, so for radio flyer, uh, it, it's, it's a really fun way to get these folks, get their voices out there, their actual voices uh, out in the community in a new way. Again, you might've read Chris McCoy, uh, some of his, um, you know, TV and, and film stuff for Jesse Davis, our books guy, uh, or just our whole host of people out there, but it's a really, really amazing venue, um, to, to be able to get them out there in a new way. And to everybody at YXR, uh, and the daily Memphian and everybody that's responsible for that radio station, just, uh, thank you. It's, yeah. uh, uh oh, the, gonna, the, yeah. and the response so far has been, incredible uh, awesome. That's great. all the all the music uh and the people on our show uh that have listened to it uh it's just it's well put together you know robbie jb all the the crowd out there at yxr uh they hit the ground running and made something super cool yeah and i should say and fully disclose i am a board we daily memphis has a partner in this really crosstown took the lead and, and u of m i mean as well this was the old wumr um, I'm a board member, I should mention, but I had nothing to do with anything. Um, but it is, I mean, I do know when, when we were sort of coming together and trying to talk about what would this be like and what would YXR be? And we knew, I mean, early on, Robbie Grant, who's the, what, executive director of the, of the entity that, that mm -hmm. runs the station, Jared Boy, JB is a program manager, both of them are hosts as well, but, um, there'd be mostly music, but that we wanted some talk. Um, we didn't need NPR. We didn't want to compete with, with W, you know, WKO that, 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 that was absolutely not what we wanted to do. Right. And, um, I remember early on somebody saying, well, the daily Memphian is going to do all the talk and all the news. And I said, no, we can't one, one, it would be bad. Right. There's just no good. That's not the point of a, a radio station like this, of, of having a whole breadth of the community contributing, uh, two, we could have never gotten to it. Natalie would have killed me. Uh, <laughs> she would have killed me, then quit, or quit and killed me at the same time. Um, but anyway, so I was really happy when when you all were were able to get involved, and 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 as other people have gotten involved, we're going to have Larry Robinson from um, uh, Kazukian, which has been a, a really right. interesting um, podcast network that does stuff locally and nationally. That um, um, he'll be on, I think, next week or the week after, and kind of talk about how they're contributing and. Um, anyway, so yeah, no, we're really happy that you all could, could be a part of it. And um, I, I do love hearing all the daily Memphian reporters on there as people that I've known for a long time and have worked with, uh, Tom Bailey. I don't think I have seen Tom, uh, in more than a year, but the other day I was, uh, uh in the kitchen doing something and here he comes at the top of the hour talking about some new development and y'all brought him right into my kitchen. That was, it was a really, yeah. really lovely thing. It was cool. And Tom's great on the radio. Got that. Tom great is great on the radio. Host. Yeah. Tom, Tom is great on the radio. Did you work with Tom back at the C? Because you were, let's do your quick journalism career in Memphis. Yeah, uh, I, I've been almost everywhere. Um, but uh, I started, I got here 2006 and uh, got a job at the Business Journal. Uh, I was there when uh, Bill Welburn uh, was there and Terry Hollihan mm -hmm. was the uh, the Emmy oh. over there. And I covered healthcare, retail, and some other things and um and really kind of re immersed myself in, in memphis business uh and it was just an incredible experience one of the things that i learned uh that bill had us do were quarterly earnings reports i don't care who it was for we we had them in the paper uh and so to learn how to write that way was really really incredible and uh he let me have a long leash to kind of chase some stuff down and it was a lot of fun uh so then i think two Two years after that, uh, I was recruited by James Overstreet, who's now at yep. the Daily Memphian, uh, yep. to go over to the Commercial Appeal, which was a huge deal for me. Uh, I started my journalism career when I was 17, working at uh, my kind of uh, my hometown newspaper, the Weekly Livingston Enterprise. Uh, that's not it. It's the Overton County News. Oh, my gosh. My old publisher would kill me. <laughs> Overton County News in Livingston, Tennessee. And, uh, and then through college, I worked at the Daily News Journal, the daily paper in Burfreesboro, Tennessee. I didn't know. Um, yep. 
And um, so, you know, when I got to Memphis, you know, I always wanted to work at, at the uh, at a big major daily newspaper. And uh, so I got the call from James and, and went over there and it was great. So uh, I was back in the business department. I was still covering healthcare, care um, and, and some other things. And uh, and they'll never let me forget that I, at the time I had this really long hair that came down to my my shoulders. I was going through a thing. OK, but uh, so <laughs> we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went back to the business department and, uh, it was, uh, Wayne Risher and Tom Bailey, uh, who are now at the, at the daily Memphian and, and man, big ups to Wayne. He's getting ready to retire, but he has, oh, he, he's man, so good. I know he's incredible. And, uh, I mean, what he knows about FedEx is incredible. He'll, he'll forget more than I'll ever know about it. And he always does such a great job and downtown too. He, he does a great job covering downtown. Um, and then uh, there were there a handful of other reporters uh, that were back there, but I got to know those guys. And really, when I got there, just their institutional knowledge about Memphis business and Memphis anything else was really, really incredible. And they would had these long journalism careers that uh, that went back and it was just really fun to get there and kind of get that uh, get the feeling yeah. um, from all that stuff. And then so I covered business for about three years at the commercial appeal and I spent my last year uh, covering City Hall for um for the ca and then uh, made the move on to the flyer and i've been there for eight nine years so you were there was that when the beginning of the cutting i don't want to pick on the ca it's not that at all it's just that i mean you know that people remember back at you know 2003 yeah there were about 250 people 2009 there was about 200 people mm-hmm. and you know they have give or take 30 or so in memphis now which is not again i'm not picking on them we compete with them but you know, I always say they make us better. I hope to think I like to think we make them better. Absolutely. This is lucky to have all these actually, frankly, this given the state of local journalism, which we can talk about a little bit more nationally, Memphis is lucky to have as many news outlets as it does, you know, the flyer and the business journal and, you know, the, the CA, the daily Memphis and all that, but it isn't, it is sad to think of the decline. So when yeah. you were there, they were still 150 people there or something like that. In the newsroom? It was still big. Uh, yeah. you know, it was big enough to where the sports department was in a whole other room, you know, yeah. and then you had a whole section back for, for features, uh, and then business had its own thing. That was even before they consolidated into kind of one, one big room. And I left right before some of the major cutting started over there. Uh, and, and I left for other reasons. Just I thought the flyer was a good opportunity and, and, and sounded like uh, my kind of thing, which has turned out to be true. Uh, but uh, uh, so, yeah, they really started cutting after I left. And uh, and it was it was hard to watch. You know, so many yeah, great reporters was. Um, that uh, that weren't reporters anymore. And, and so much institutional knowledge that 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 the city lost uh, was, was kind of hard to watch. And and so. You know, I do think, I mean, we are, we are absolutely spoiled in Memphis, Tennessee with so much great media and so many great reporters. Now that we've got two daily newspapers, I can't think of another city that has that going right now. And, um, and Memphians should count themselves lucky and, and that we do, we retain a lot of that knowledge, you know, thanks to the daily Memphian and and others. So, yeah, I think, I think one of the only cities that has of of mid-sized cities, forget, you know, the big, big LA, New York, Chicago. Um, that has two daily papers still is Salt Lake. Um, and that, and, and notably one of the Salt Lake papers, um, and I'm just trying to blank on which one it is, the, the, the Salt Lake City Tribune converted to being a nonprofit um, after 150 year history, wow. you know, 100 and something year history. It became a nonprofit uh, maybe six months ago. And it competes against the, Des- they call it the Desiree News, right? It's not the Desert News. It's That's the- right. Yeah, I'm going to screw that up. All the Salt Lake City fans are going to yell at me. Um, <laughs> um, but they both just re- through COVID uh, decided to go from seven days a week. Both of them are going down to one day a week in print. Right. It's just it's just a brutal, brutal thing. I want to do some. I want to come back to local news for a second. Um, uh, but first, I want to remind everyone, the sidebar airs here on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130, uh, preceded by Jennifer Biggs' show, uh, The Sound Bites. Um, this is also a podcast on the Daily Memphian site, um, or you can get it on WYXR if you missed any of it. Um, the podcasts we do at the Daily Memphian include this. Uh, we do uh, a Behind the Headlines podcast, uh, the full show from WKNO, uh, as well as Bill Drees does a show on politics. And as we get back into sports, we're doing uh, sports podcasts again. All the Daily Memphian podcasts are on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
A reminder, this podcast is brought to you by FedEx Employees Credit Association, offering savings, checking, and lending to all FedEx employees, retirees, and their family members at FECCA.com. Uh, we are here with Toby Sales, a news editor at the Memphis Flyer, host of the Radio Flyer every Friday at noon on WYXR. Um, I, I want to talk a little more about local news. I mean, and I was talking about Chris Harrington uh, from the Daily Memphian, but uh, also a CA alum and, uh, and, and absolutely a, a Memphis Flyer alum was on the show last week. And we talked a bit about how the cuts um, – to, I mean, really just the loss of alt weeklies around the country were almost sort of the canary in the coal mine of what was going to happen to daily papers. Right. And, you know, the Village Voice is gone, which is right. hard to believe. Uh, what City Paper just got shut down in Minneapolis, which was one of the really storied, most res- at one point, one of the most respected, you know, alt weeklies. Um, what is Creative Loafing gone? I mean, so right. many of them were gone pre COVID. City Paper post COVID, I would fear that others will. And again, it's back to what we were talking about that Memphis is so lucky for a city this size to have as many news outlets. And, you know, the flyer is going strong after how many decades now? Oh, um, gosh. So since 89. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're, uh, we're just still in there scrapping and fighting and keeping up the good fight. And, uh, and, and we're really lucky too. Uh, we've had a lot of great leadership over the years that that's uh, kept us afloat. A lot of great talent uh, that have kept the pages lively. Uh, Jackson Baker, as I've said, he's been there for a long time doing what almost nobody else in town or in the state does as far as covering politics the way Jackson does it. Um, you know, we've always had authoritative voices on music and uh, movies and uh, arts and culture and all those things. Uh, so it's it's been this huge cast of characters that have kept the flyer in readers' minds and and on the on the the stands for for so so long. And I'm lucky to be there, and and we're still going strong. And uh, uh, yeah, still going strong. Yeah, yeah. No, it is, and and and, and you know, a lot of that. I mean, not to get too in the weeds, but I think has always been the the really great local ownership. And when you Absolutely. look at what happened with again, it's sort of canary in the coal mine. What was going to happen with the the big dailies is really good. All weekly started buying each other up right. and creating big chains and, and uh, sort of creating, well, we can be really efficient and we can share content and we can share staff and, and it all makes great sense on a spreadsheet and it all makes great sense for a lot of businesses scale, mm-hmm. like, you know, the MBAs call it. But I think with news, it's been shown that it hasn't worked that well. It, it was certainly disastrous for all weeklies it's created a lot of ubiquity in local TV news, which most TV stations now are chains. And, and clearly that's what's happened with the, with the big dailies, which is sad. Um, um, the, the one thing um, I was interested, in, I think you were talking about last week on the, sh- on your show, the radio flyer on Friday, um, you guys did best of Memphis this year, uh, which is an institution in, in and of itself and the party, but right. you had to do it in COVID talk for a second about how you guys did best of Memphis and the, the, the voting is one thing, but the party, was it was something else right and in and, and the party uh eric people look forward to that party it's exclusive it's invite only uh it's the winners and then we just kind of uh you know invite this kind of uh uh really eclectic cast of characters that show up there so you'll have uh you know uh guys from a punk band hanging out with uh you know politicos from memphis it's really interesting to watch uh, and we usually do it at some uh, old building that has been uh, a wreck for years and years and years. We've done it at uh, the Tennessee Brewery before. That was even, they even did the beer garden out there. So that was kind of a spooky one. Uh, we had it out at the old Imperial Bowling Lanes on summer uh, after it had been shut down before it got uh, demolished. And and that was a, that was a crazy party. Um, and so, uh, but of course we had to pivot this year. And um, so what they came up with, our, our great organizers, they came up with a drive-through event because we still want it to our winners to you know feel special. Getting the award, it feels great on its own, but you know having that party, having that uh, that thing where we can actually say we see you, winners, and and we want to celebrate you is a whole other thing. So we wanted to do something. So we had a drive-through event at the Pink Palace Museum. Uh, people kind of came in their cars. They came through. They got this kind of goodie box, and then they could drive on through and stop and and do a photo op. Uh, some would stop, uh, and we had certain ones that did uh, kind of live interviews with WMC that was there that was incredible. 
uh, with Joyce Peterson and Ron Childers. I mean, so, you know, if you're getting behind the microphone with those guys, you feel really, really special. It was a, a really a lot of fun. So you kind of grabbed all that stuff and then you drove behind the Pink Palace and uh, you drove through kind of our beer line there and you can either get like a cocktail pouch or a, a Beale Street <laughs> Brewing beer in your car um, and, uh, and rendezvous popcorn. You know, we had a few treats and things like that. And then you can stop and uh, and either sit in your car and listen uh, or drive on through because we had uh, Amy LeVere and Will Sexton playing. And uh, and I went over there for just a second to check it out and get a beer. And um and it was awesome. People were out of their cars and they were socially distanced yeah. and they were doing the best they can in yeah. this situation. And, and that's, I think that's what 2020 is all about is, uh, the, what we had to do was make the best of, uh, uh, make the best with what we have rather than, yeah. you know, a bad situation. It is a bad situation, but, no, uh, it we're, we're saying there are safe ways to do this. And I think we pulled it off. Um, with just a few minutes left here, um, uh, well, I guess I have a little bit extra time today. Um, the um, Bigfoot, talk to me about Bigfoot. <laughs> you you have you have uh, a, a particular uh, affinity for that, Bigfoot. Yes, and uh, uh, and I've had it since I was in third grade, so uh, it's just one of those rabbit holes I never crawled out of. And uh, <laughs> and why now? Why, why, why now? Exactly. You know, you're you're this. Working. It's this far working. down the down the road, and uh, and so it's just one of those things that's just always uh, always been around. And uh, so in 2017, that was a big year for 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 Bigfoot. It was the 50th anniversary of this really famous piece of Bigfoot footage called the Patterson Gimlin film. And so they were having these big uh, they were having these big uh, celebrations out on the West Coast where it was all filmed. And I wanted to go and then I started pricing it out and just even looking at tickets. And I thought my wife would kill me if I even asked (laughs) to go to this thing. And so I thought that was a shame. There wasn't any Bigfoot festivals around here. And I thought, well, why don't I just have my own? You know, Uh, I'm friends with the guys at Memphis Made. And so I approached them. I said, what do you think about having a Bigfoot festival here? (laughs) And they just looked at me cross eyed and, you know, and they just kind of rubbed their mouths and said, well, oh, okay, sure, yeah, man, whatever. Oh, I can imagine yeah. Andy, Andy Ashby, uh, uh, Daily <laughs> Daily News, MBJ uh, alum, yeah. who's now a fantastic guy there, just being like, "Man, yeah, all right, I mean, yeah. we can, you know, sell some beer." <laughs> exactly, and, and I was worried about that. You know, I thought, man, I really want to get people in the door, but I, I thought when I had the first one uh, that it was going to be like me and like six dudes sitting around drinking beers and just you know talking uh, whatever. But I'd done some programming and all that, and put some stuff on Facebook and. Uh, that first year, there was easily three or four hundred people that showed up, <laughs> and uh, I had uh, I had a team of Bigfoot researchers there. I had a panel. Uh, I did I do this thing called the Year in Bigfoot, where I go back uh, over the year and, and all the biggest sightings and all that kind of stuff. I would say probably there was maybe uh, you know a third of the people there were there to you know they were there ironically to people watch, um, and it was it was a lot of fun. And they were like, let's do it again next year. And so we did it the next year. Uh, and there was easily 400, 500 people there and, 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 uh, 2019 was huge too. And of course we didn't have it this year. Um, but, uh, 2021 is going to be uh, bigger and better than ever. Um, but I also have a, a paranormal podcast called Haint Blues and, uh, it's a, it's just about Southern paranormal topics. And that, that's kind of how I got into podcasting and all this. I heard other shows, uh, and I thought, you know, I want one. I want I want to do a podcast that I want to listen to. And I love Southern culture. I love anything paranormal. And so I kind of married the two. And, and the show's been up since 2018, I guess. But it's it's bigger than Bigfoot. I know what you guys are thinking. I'm you know, it's not I'm not a siloed man here only for Bigfoot. It's a uh, uh, ghosts and UFOs and uh, telekinesis. And uh, there, I did an uh, episode about a psychic horse in Virginia. Uh, that was really amazing. There's, uh, you know, past lives. It's kind of, it's a, it's a bunch of different things. So, you know, I'm a Renaissance man when it comes to Southern paranormal stuff. <laughs> so for people who, uh, want to tune into the, the tell us what's the name again, uh, the Haint pe- blues and, uh, and it's H A I N T blues. Uh, and Haint blue is that comes from, uh, the Gullah Geechee people of, the kind of the sea islands down there in like South Carolina and stuff. And one of their uh, folk magic traditions is they paint the, the, the roof of their ceiling or the outside porch ceiling. They paint that 
a color called paint blue, and that keeps evil spirits from your house. And you'll see that through the South a lot. People will paint their porch ceiling uh, kind of a shade of robin's egg blue. And that's where I didn't know that was, that's why I knew that that was common. I remember that when Mm -hmm. I first moved to Memphis 25 years ago and you get all these porches, particularly in Midtown and the older. So that is, that's where that comes from, that blue ceiling. That's where it originally comes from now. I mean, you've got, you know, uh, uh, all the big paint companies, they have lines of, of paint blues uh, out there. uh, And they'll say, you know, it just, it's a Southern thing. It kind of captures the evening light a lot better on your front porch and things, but the original, yeah, the original folk, uh, uh, folk legend uh, comes from from uh, people trying to keep evil spirits from their house. So that's the name of the show, Haint Blues, and that's where I got it from. Uh, another thing that uh, that we we got to work in because virtually every if you've been on behind the headlines fifteen times, I would say twelve of those times you've gotten some reference to medical marijuana or some sort of <laughs> some sort of marijuana reference yeah. you know, on behind the and really pretty much the only. I mean, I think of the twelve references to uh, marijuana in the. <laughs> 500 and something shows we've done. I think you're 12 for 12 on those. Of, yeah. Well, I remember one time, cause we, we, you know, the way we do behind the lines with the journalist round table, when we've got mm-hmm. journalists in, we, we all kind of talk a little bit by email and Natalie. And, and then we kind of talk before they turn on the cameras, kind of what direction we're going to go, what stories, what, what's most important and so on. And you'll have whatever. And every, every often people have kind of a, something out of a left field, which is great. And you had a medical marijuana one. I think it was Arkansas was first starting to vote on it. That's right. And I swear to God, we had like 20 seconds left. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to Toby quickly, Arkansas medical. And you, I've never heard or seen you talk so fast. You got yeah. more, like 20 second tail end of the show. Yeah. What was that? Was that the show where uh, at the very end of it, I kind of was trying to wrap it up and I said, marijuana is a coming. <laughs> and like, Everybody in the control booth was laughing. I couldn't hear them, of course. I thought, oh, you did a great job, Toby. But then they, they turned it off, and uh, and you start busting out laughing. Natalie's laughing, and uh, yes. yeah, marijuana's a coming, uh, is that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, and, and, and I also come by marijuana, honestly, too. I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, partaken of marijuana since I was 19 years old. Uh, but, uh, you know, dispensaries started opening up around the country and a lot of alt weeklies are really seeing a lot of revenue coming from the, the, you know, marijuana trade out there from all these dispensaries and everything else. And so we really wanted to position the flyer to be ready for that when, and if it ever happened in Tennessee. Yeah. So we started, um, a column called Cannabeat, and I was the guy, even though I don't know <laughs> anything about marijuana, you know, it wouldn't be the first time I, I covered something I didn't know anything about. And so I just dug in, you know, and, and really yeah. got, uh, uh, really got dedicated and involved in it and trying to look around at different things. And so, yeah, marijuana would just be top of my mind, uh, for all these things. And so, yeah, if we were looking for some goofy thing to throw in there at the end, and even like before, I remember we would sit down when we do, uh, uh, behind the headlines and we're sitting down, you know, you'd be like, okay, well, you're going to talk this, you're going to talk that. And then, uh, it's like Toby marijuana. And I was like, yeah, I can, I can talk marijuana. And you'd see the rest of the guys just kind of like roll their eyes, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, sales is going for marijuana again. This guy's, uh, you know, but, no. uh, but anyway, yeah. So to set the record straight, it's not for, for personal, uh, preferences. I'm not it's, judging. it's very professional. I, I'm not judging. <laughs> Um, I'm not judging at all. Um, uh, I think we're, we're just about done here. Just about out of time. I, I do. I have been asking people this and I'm gonna keep doing it until I get bored of it. Uh, the, since this is primarily a music station. So I just think it's interesting. What, uh, first concert you ever went to? Oh boy. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say that I think it was probably, it was a, uh, like a Southern rock thing. And it was fronted by the Marshall Tucker band. Nice. And, yeah. And I went there because this girl I wanted to date was going. And so I went and I don't even think I knew one song. I think Molly Hatchet was there. Uh, wow. You know, yeah. One of those. 38 Special? Maybe some 38 Special? Oh, maybe. for sure. Yeah. If they weren't there, they missed out on a, on a big ticket. Uh, but yeah. that was kind of one of the, the very first ones that I can remember uh, that I went to just for whatever. But I remember the one that I first got excited about was definitely a Jimmy Buffett concert. I know I'm winning fans left and right here, right? Like 38 special and Jimmy Buffett. But, uh, you know, hey, I came here to tell the truth today. <laughs> Do you remember the first album you bought with your own money? You know, like, the, you know. Yes. Uh, and that one was uh, the very first album I ever got was I got a CD player one year for Christmas. My mom got me Brian Adams waking up the neighbors. If that tells you like uh, that there was the, the, from yeah. the Robin Hood soundtrack. But yeah. I think the the first one I ever bought was uh, was a Nirvana Nevermind album. No, oh, it was it, it was either that or Pearl Jam versus uh, or Pearl Jam Ten 
Uh, yeah. it was it was one of those. I bought those right at the same time, and uh, yeah. so yeah, at least I can maybe win some cool points on Pearl Jam and Nirvana, not uh, Thirty Eight Special and Jimmy Buffett, you know. Yeah, but that stuff's great. Like, somebody <laughs> was it Robbie Grant who was like his first show. He lies and says it was like the the Four Tops or something like that, but he actually saw with his mom, and he was like, I right. probably didn't really see any of it. But the first show he really went to was. Um, I think it was Night Ranger or something like that. Nice. So, that's awesome. I think it's fantastic. What was your first show? I know I know we're out of uh, time, but for, uh, my first show was Robert Plant. And Whoa. Uh, yeah, a, 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 his first tour after Led Zeppelin had broken up and Bonham had died. So that was an 82. Uh so it was a pretty good one. That, that was a good one. Not bad. Uh, I mean, I went some I've been to some bad shows. I, I saw Night Ranger <laughs> opening for ZZ Top on the Eliminator tour. It was Sweet. god awful. Um, I saw, I've seen some really bad shows, but, um, but I, I scored on the first one. So. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Toby, thanks for being here again. The radio flyer airs every Friday at noon on WYXR. It's also, you can get a download of it on the WYXR website. Um, this is the sidebar, which airs every Thursday at 1130 on WYXR 91.7, or you can get the full podcast of the show on the daily Memphian site on WYXR or wherever you get your podcasts. Again, next week, uh, tune in again. We'll have somebody else on. We've been focused very much on people involved with the radio station and kind of introducing people to them. Uh, I'll probably branch out from that eventually, but um, next week I think we've got Larry Robinson from Kazuki. Thanks, and we'll see you then. The Sidebar is sponsored by FedEx Employees Credit Association, offering savings, checking, and lending to all FedEx employees, retirees, and their family members at FECCA.com. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.